This is the book of Luke, chapter 2, and verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Alright, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that rule very well and teach very well and oversee the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazakh whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, quick shout out to you sincere Akiam and Akwath, which is also Hebrew for you brothers and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling towards your salvation. To y'all, I like to say Shalom. That's Hebrew for peace. This is the Ak Alaya, the brother Elijah. And I'm here with the quick lesson and exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiel Oshai in these last days for the edification of the hopeful elect man you know so without too much else to say let's hop right back into the scriptures and let's get some understanding as you can even see by the title of this video the topic being unprofitable servants right and like i said without too much else to say let's hop back into the scriptures and lord willing this be edifying unto you listeners man so this is the book of luke chapter 2 and verse 49 and it reads and he said unto them how is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Right now, for those of y'all who are unaware, this is uh, the Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, man. And he's speaking to his mother and father, you know, Mary and Joseph, his biological parents. You know, for you non believers out there, you know, he was speaking to Mary and Joseph because as you read and as you'll see earlier up on in the chapter, uh, the Lord Yahweh Shai. Uh, and his family had went to Jerusalem, you know, as he even says in verse 42 and verse 41. Now, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem. Yahweh Shalom, Yahweh Shalom in the Hebrew, which means the city of peace. It says after the custom of the feast. Right. So the Lord Yahweh shot went with his, his mother and father and they went up to Jerusalem as the Israelites custom is to acknowledge the passover even in their land you know uh let me see in, in the point uh, in this context i'll read it verse 43 as well luke 2 and 43 and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned the child yahweh shai who this world ignorantly calls jesus tarried behind in jerusalem and joseph and his mother knew not of it right so the lord yahweh shai basically you know <laughs> he stayed in, in, in Jerusalem, man. When after the feast was over, as we just read, Mary and Joseph, hey, they dipped, they left, they were going back to Nazareth, right? But the Lord Yahweh Shai, hey, he, he tarried, he stayed there. And Mary and Joseph didn't know, they didn't realize it, you know? Of course, you could substantiate and assume and guess why they didn't know the Lord Yahweh Shai was not with them, being 12 years old and him being their child. You know, we can speculate why, what happened. Maybe they they were just thinking about, you know, what you can speculate. The whole point is the Lord Yahweh Shai stayed. And then when he was confronted by his parents, when they finally figured out where he was at all this time, you know, the scriptures say it was days had passed. Let me see. I believe it was three days. Uh, oh, in the midst. Yeah, yeah. And it came to pass in 46. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple sitting in the midst of the doctors both hearing them and asking them questions right and uh as you can see over here the word doctor really goes into teachers right the, those who were supposed to have the true was an understanding of the scriptures right the lord yahweh Shai went into the temple to break bread amongst them right coming back to the main point uh of me coming to this chapter once again luke 2 and 49 when he when the lord yahweh Shai was confronted by his parents this is how he responded and he said unto them how is it that you sought me? You know, why was it that you were looking for me? As it even says over here in the NIV, the New International Version, it says Luke 2 and 49. Why were you searching for me? He asked, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house, a.k.a. wished ye not that I must be about my father's business? Didn't you not know 
that my whole duty is is the ministry of my heavenly father, Abba Nawa Yahweh, you know, even our heavenly father. You know, that's, that's how the Lord Yahweh shall respond to them. And it even tells you in verse 50, they understood not the saying which he spoke unto them. They didn't know. They didn't understand what he was talking about. But yet still the Lord Yahweh Shah, his words were important. You know, and as you can, you know, think back again to the title of this video being unprofitable servants, we are commanded to be stewards, you know, disciples over the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's house, you know, and we're supposed to so like, and we're supposed to be disciples of the Lord Yahweh Shah, you know, to be learned from him, to study his ways and, 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 and to perform his works, man. You know, that's what we are his the Lord Yahweh Bashmiel Shah is hopeful, sincere believers. That's the spirit in which we are to carry ourselves in. You know, even as the Lord Yahweh Shah, even being at the age of twelve, you know, which is when he began doing the work of his father, when he his ministry began, you know, even understanding just as the Lord Yahweh Shah understood the assignment, we are to understand the assignment. Our job is to be about our father's business, you know. It, it, it is to have the ministry, the, the profession of the gospel, you know, the forwarding of the kingdom of heaven. That is our mission. That's our assignment. That's our father's business. And that's exactly what we were commanded to take part in. You know, matter of fact, with that being said, let me go to John. Let's substantiate. Let's back up. Let's prove, you know, that statement that I just spoke through the Holy Bible. I said, I said, Luke. Let's go ahead and get John uh, chapter 21. And let's see what the Lord Yahweh Shai said to the apostle Peter, the head apostle, the chiefest apostle, right? It says John chapter 21 and verse 15. So then they had dined. Uh, look, I was reading the, title, the love motivation. Not sure what they mean by that. <laughs> uh yeah, how should I reinstate Peter? That's more accurate according to the context. I'm not sure what they're alluding to. The love motivation, I don't know. But anyway, it's still like him. Um, John 21, 15. So when they had dined, yeah, how was shy? Say it to Simon Peter. Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my lands okay so i guess they trying to have some word play thinking they're deep you know but no as you see the lord yahweh shy you know proving peter proving his spirit testing his spirit you know the lord yahweh shy asked him lovest thou me more than these do you love me more than these other, the other apostles you know it says what he says unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him, feed my lambs, right? What do you call feeding the Lord's lambs? You know, what is that? You know, that's a hard saying. That's a hard speech to be understood for the majority of you unlearned listeners out there. You know, to feed the Lord Yahweh Shai's lambs is not literally talking about go getting some bread and some you know, some whatever you can find and then go out to your nearest farm and whatever lambs or goat, not goat, so like, whatever lambs or sheep you can find, feed it. That's not what the Lord Yahweh was saying here. But let's continue on and we're going to get some understanding upon this. It says in verse 16, he said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? He says unto him, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He says unto him feed my sheep he saith unto him the third time simon son of jonah lovest thou me peter was grieved because he saith unto him the third time lovest thou me you know peter his mind thinking lord not only did i say it twice now but you already know that i love you you know this is basically peter getting greedy in the spirit like lord why why do you keep asking me this you know it you know right let's read it it says peter was grieved because he said because he said unto him the third time lovest thou me and he said, he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. <laughs> thou knowest that I love thee. The Lord Yahweh Shai says unto him, feed my sheep. You know, so with reading this, you know, as you see the Lord Yahweh Shai said, feed my lambs, feed my sheep, uh, feed my sheep. You know, sheep and lambs, they're interchangeable. The Lord Yahweh Shai is basically saying the same exact thing three times. 
you know. But the whole point, the whole emphasis of what the Lord Yahweh Shai is conveying here is the ministry. It's the work of the kingdom. It is the kingdom business. Abba Yahweh's business even, man, you know. And that is exactly what the Apostle Peter, you know, uh, even according to his own words, signed up for. Right. We understand even pursuant to the book of first John chapter five and verse three, I believe. Actually, I'm definitely not quoting that. Right. I believe I know it's first John. It might be chapter three. But we understand that the true love of Yahweh, Yahushai, which is what the Lord Yahushai was asking Peter. Do you love me? Right. This is love according to the Bible. Yeah. First John chapter five. And matter of fact, let's start at verse two. Actually, let's start at verse one. It says first John five and one. Whosoever believeth that Yahweh Shai is the anointed one, is the Hamashiach, is born of Yahweh. You are born again. You you have been washed by the living waters of the word, and your heart has been converted from you know from dead works to the understanding of the heavenly power and even serving him, right? Uh, whosoever believeth that Yahweh Shai is the Hamashiach is born of Yahweh, right? Once again. You are that new creature. You, if you believe that the Lord Yahweh Shai is the anointed one, is our Messiah, is our Redeemer, and is going to be the one to come and save us from even the judgment of the second death, which is the ramifications for all the iniquity and the uh, sins of the world, even including the the sin of taking the M O T B, which is the R to the F to the I to the D C hip, right? If if you have been uh blessed enough to be preserved from those judgments hey you know that you understand that that was all due to the lord yahweh shai you know you are that new creature but anyway sticking on to the point it says and everyone that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him so you can't claim to love the heavenly father if you don't love his children Right. That's what we just read. And if the Lord Yahweh Shai is the chiefest of the Lord's children and you claim to love him, then you also have to love the Heavenly Father. So let's get some understanding about what this love is that apparently is inseparable from loving the Most High and loving his children. It says first John five and two by this, by this, we know that we love the children of Yahweh. When we love Yahweh and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Yahweh, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous, right? So the point being, as the Lord Yahweh Shai asked Peter, Lovest thou me? When Peter answered and replied, Yes, that was basically his declaration of obedience to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai's commandments. Understanding the assignment that was Peter professing that he was going to take part and join the Lord Yahweh Shai in his labor of doing the will of Yahweh of the Heavenly Father, you know, and that's the understanding of feeding my lambs, feeding my sheep, feeding my sheep. Because if you love Yahweh Shai, you're going to feed the sheep. Who are the sheep? Let's get it. You know, this is Matthew chapter 15. And verse 24, and we'll read down to verse 26. It says, Matthew 15 and 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So this is the Lord Yahweh Shai speaking, you know, red letter. And he said, what? I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is what is supposed to be fed to the sheep. This is the ministry and this is the gospel in which the apostle Peter you know, basically agreed and saying that he would push and teach and exhort, you know, and even prophesy in the name of Yahweh Shai that the Lord Yahweh Shai is going to come again to the house of Israel to receive them, you know, even with gladness and rejoicing, you know, referring to the elect, not the entire nation, but yet and still understanding the sheep when the Lord Yahweh Shai said, Feed my sheep. He was talking about the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Those are the only ones whom he was sent to according to his own words. And we know the Lord Yahweh Shai is not a liar. You know, it says in verse 25, Matthew 15 and 25. Then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. Right. Because in this context, the Lord Yahweh Shai was speaking to, I believe this is the, okay, Canaanite woman. Right. Which, 
you know, through the spirit, if y'all can receive it, man, it, the, the woman's daughter had to be an Israelite for, you know, in the context for the woman to, to even be healed, man, you know, but digressing to the point, uh, it says in verse 26, but he answered and said, it is not meat to take the children's bread, right? Remember, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, right? It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So according to the Lord Yahweh Shai, there is a particular way in which you are to, uh, what are the words I'm looking for? There's a particular way in which you are to be about the father's business, right? It is not giving the children's bread to the dogs, right? It's not taking the, 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 the bread that was set up only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and giving it to, to another nation wherein it has nothing to do with them. No, the, once again, this ministry is only to the sheep. You know, the Lord Yahweh was specific. He didn't repeat himself three times only to forget what the hell he was talking about or, or misquote himself or misrepresent the Heavenly Father's will. No, of course not. We understand that the sheep that he wants to be fed are the Israelites. The Israelites today, not even knowing they're Israelites, majority of them, calling themselves black, African-American, Native American, and Hispanic, you know, hey, they don't, like I said, this is why we have to have this truth declared unto them, spoken unto them, whether they hear or forbear, whether they can listen and understand and believe or not, man. Our mission and our duty is to preach the gospel unto the four corners of the world, man, so that the end may come, so that the salvation that we are speaking about can actually come, you know? Once again, the point that I want to re reiterate right here before we um, proceed on and continue on is that the sheep are the Israelites, man. How do you feed the sheep? By giving them the bread. What is the bread? All right. Let's get this. Uh, did he say manna from heaven? Bread. No, he said bread of life. There we go. The water y'all about Shemuel shot. This is John chapter 6. And... Yeah, <laughs> let me see. I might have to. Yeah, we're going to read both of these. John chapter 6 and verse 35. And Yahweh said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Why? Because these scriptures, right? Because according to the Bible, you can't just believe on Yahweh according to your own thoughts and your own will and intents. You have to believe on Yahweh according to thus saith the Lord, according to the words of the book. Right, the Lord Yahweh said, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers. <laughs> so, like, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Right, and that living water is these scriptures. Why? Because you know, when, when these scriptures enter into your mind, they're going to proceed out of your mouth. They're, you're going to constantly be talking about them, constantly exhorting them, bringing them out, you know, even rebuking the lies. That, that are, are trying to corrupt the truth and, and, and um, basically, uh, what's the word? What is the word? Try, uh, basically try to gaslight the truth, man. Make, make it try to seem like something is not. You know, nah. You got to believe on Yahweh Shah according to the scripture, according to what the Bible says. And according to the Bible in John 6 and 35, the Lord Yahweh Shah said he is this bread of life. Right? <laughs> Let's read John 6 and 51. It says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. That's a hard speech. That's a hard saying to be understood. Yet and still the Lord Yahweh Shai still said that. And he meant it. You know, how do we understand that the Lord Yahweh Shai is the living bread? We understand that, you know, as the manna that came down from the heavens in the old world, after our fathers left Egypt and were in the wilderness, you know, uh, the Lord Yahweh, Abinawi Yahweh, Bashem Yahashar, fed his people uh, with manna that literally came down from heaven. You know, that's how he fed them and he preserved them. Yet that bread was not allowed, or well, that bread was not able to keep them in e eternal life. You know, they hungered after that bread and they even died after that, eating that bread. <laughs> you know, not to laugh because it's not a funny matter yet and still it's the truth. You know, the Lord Yahweh Shai said he is the living bread. He is the one that came down from heaven, you know, and he even gave his flesh, you know, for the life of the world. Read 
uh, John chapter 3 and verse 16, man. You know, we understand even, uh, let me tell you, what's the, uh, another verse? Hey, man, uh, Luke, matter of fact, let me grab it. Luke, is it 7 I'm thinking about? No, no, it's not 7. Uh, Luke, I know it's 47. All right, oh, that's why. Now, there's one in Luke I was thinking about. But anyways, this is enough. Uh, Acts 5 and 30, right? This is where the Lord Yahweh Shai literally gave his flesh, you know, as it was prophesied that he would do. He had to come and be slain, you know, as a, a, a lamb without spot and without blemish, even according to the words of the Apostle Peter. You know, he had to do this in order to, to be able to quicken and to revive the Israelites, to bring back life unto them. Let's prove it. Acts 5 and 30. As we read earlier, you have to believe on the Lord Yahweh Shai according to the words of the book. It says, Acts 5 and 30. It says, The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree, right? Because the Lord Yahweh Shai was killed. You know, he, he did die while he was hanging on a tree. He was crucified and he was nailed to that to, to the crucifix, man, to that wooden cross. You know, and that's where he hung until he died, man. Till the heavenly father received his spirit. You know, it says in verse 31, him hath the heavenly father exalted with his right hand, right? Representing righteousness to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel, to feed the sheep, right? To be life unto the world, right? This is that world in John three sixteen, right? For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. This is what the Lord Yahweh was asking Peter if he was going to continue to teach after he, he left the earth. And what did the Apostle Peter say? Lord, you know it. Lord, you know it. <laughs> Lord, you know all things. You know I love you. You know I'm going to be obedient to your commands. You know, you know I'm going to stay true to the mission even to the end. And that's exactly what he did. You know, and for you Christianity believers out there that like to highlight where the Apostle Peter denied the Lord Yahushua three times. Hey, man, go to hell. <laughs> it's all a joke, man. Shout out to the Ak Kazak, man. Go to hell, man. <laughs> you Christianity believers are full of shit. You have no, no, none understanding of the scriptures. Yeah, the Apostle Peter denied the Lord Yahushua three times. But the Lord Yahushua told Peter he was going to do that. And guess what? The, the Apostle Peter still uh, maintained his faith through to the bitter end, man. You know? So like I said, go to hell, man. The Apostle Peter was faithful unto the end. Just as uh, the believers of the Lord Yahweh Shai, even in these times, are going to be faithful to the end, man. You know? Understanding the assignment. Understanding that we are to be servants up until the point and to where we are even unprofitable servants. Why? Because we have done all that we were commanded to do, right? Matter of fact, let me go ahead and get that verse so I can go ahead and stop, you know, dragging y'all along for that preset, right? Uh, matter of fact, while I'm saying that, I believe it's the parable too. Let me get it on. Yep. All right, so... As a matter of fact, I want to get this in the blue letter. Uh, where are we at? Luke 17. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, We're going to start right here. Just to get straight to the point, I got to start up here and for the context. Luke 17 and 6. It says, And the Lord said, and it's the Lord Yahweh Shai is still speaking in parab parabolic form, in a parable. It says, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. Right. So the context and the point of what the Lord Yahweh Shai is going into right now is the power that lords have over uh, subservient things. Right. I believe I'm using that word correctly. Let me look up the word subservient real quick. Uh, subservient even sub. Servient. I don't want to just be throwing big ass words out there as if it makes sense and it doesn't. Prepared to obey others unquestioningly. Yeah, 
Hold on, y'all watching me on the side. I'm thankful that my memory is serving me well. All right? Subservient, right? So the Lord Yahweh Shai is basically saying, look, if you're a, a master, a lord, and you got subjects, loyal subjects even, and you command them to do something, they're going to obey you if you even have faith. Now, the Lord Yahweh Shai is taking that worldly example, but applying it to the ministry and applying it to the truth, even the authority that, you know, his apostles have, you know, even in the earth. But let's digress and get to the point, right? It says in verse 7, Luke 17 and 7, but which of you, having a servant, plowing or feeding cattle, will say unto him, by and by, when he has come from the field, go and sit down to, to meet, right? And that's a question. That's a legitimate question. Let's read it in the NIV. It might be a little bit easier to understand. It says, Luke 17 and 7 in the NIV. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat. Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink. After that, you, uh, it's like, you know, I was about to say you, you may eat and drink, right? Isn't that the proper order in which a king even would command his servants? No one's going to tell their servant to stop working and enjoy, you know, the fruits of a, 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 a meal, roughly paraphrasing, you know. No, you're going to command your servant to serve. Servant, go get that drink. I'm thirsty. Servant, go get my, my meal. I'm hungry. Servant, clean up. I'm done. Servant, now you can do as you please. If you're hungry, go and eat. If you're thirsty, go and drink. That's the order, right? Let's, let's, let's come back. As a matter of fact, I'm going to continue reading this in, um, in the NIV, just for edification's sake. And you can read it to the left if you want to read it. All right, Luke 17 and 9. It says, will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. All right, let's read it over here now. All right, Luke 17 and 10 in KJV. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done that which was our duty to do, right? So as you can see, that is the spirit in which hey, you're supposed to understand. Now, now technically, uh, there's two points I want to make. Um, our desire should to truly be to be unprofitable servants, to do everything that we were commanded to do by your help, by Shemel Shai. That should be your true heart's intent. That should be your true heart's desire. If you are a faithful and obedient servant, man, you should desire to ultimately want to become an unprofitable servant, a servant that has done everything and there's nothing else left for him to do. You know, however, when it comes to your how about Shimei was shy, even to the point where you feel like there's nothing else you can do. There's always more that you can do, man. There's always more that you can do. That's why the scripture is even going into encouraging brothers to abound in this truth. You know, to constantly be growing even, multiplying the wisdom and knowledge that they have, you know, because you can never praise your Yahweh Shem Yahushai enough, man. You know, especially being right now in these times as finite creatures, as men that have a deadline that, that can, you know, be here in the earth one moment and be gone the next. When the Heavenly Father Yahweh Shem Yahushai has been doing works since eternity, man, you know, that has no ending, you know. So there, there are things that, hey, the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahushai deserves praise, honor, and glory for, whether you know it or not. Like I said, there's always more to do for the Lord, you know. But like I said, in, in regards to his ministry, even in these times now, your true heart's intent should be to, to go hard, man. You know, serve the Lord 10 times harder than you did yesterday, you know, or the year before that even, you know. Go harder. Always desire to go harder. Right. And this is what the Lord Yahweh Shai is even saying to his servants in parabolic form. So likewise, ye, Luke 17 and 10. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded of you. Right. Which is what? Go out to the highways and hedges, compel them to come into the marriage, you know, which is professing and teaching, you know, prophesying even of the coming kingdom of heaven to the earth. The Israelites being redeemed from their captivity and hardcore bondage and slavery in which they were sent to serve under the hand of their enemies, chiefly Esau, Edom, which is the biblical name and nationality of the so-called white men, women and children. 
right? Under the kingdom y'all call America, which is Babylon the Great, according to the Bible, right? We're, we're a hey, we're commanded to, to prophesy and, and, and to teach the destruction of this wicked current rulership and kingdom and the coming of a new heaven and a new earth where indwelleth righteousness, man. You know, the kingdom of heaven that will be established within the earth, man. That is a. Hey, that's what we've been commanded to, to do in this time, to repent even, acknowledge your transgression, acknowledge how you have not been um, a faithful servant, how you've even been a wicked servant. You have to acknowledge that and then repent, turn around, forsake those wicked ways and seek the ways of righteousness. These are the things that we are commanded to do now. So likewise, ye, when ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you, Say we are unprofitable servants. Lord, I've done everything you've commanded me to do. You know, that should be your, your heart's desire to be able to say something of that nature. Yet still, hey, there, especially now in these times, really until the Lord shuts up the mouth of his prophets, hey, there's still more work to be done. There's still more edification to, to be had. There's still more rebukes and corrections, you know, to be to be sent out, man, you know. Even looking at the man in the mirror, man, there's still always something else that you can tweak and correct and do better in upon yourself, even from day to day, you know, you know, yeah. And, and once again, like I said, I, I wanted to make those, those points off of the scripture because, you know, ultimately, as the scriptures even say, the, uh, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. According to the scriptures, man, there, there's a lot of work to be done. There, there's no excuse for for why, you know, a man of the Lord can't do the will of the Lord, man. Especially in regards to like, you know, for a worldly example, let me just say this. And we're going to wrap it up pretty soon after this. I think I only have maybe like one, one or two more scriptures. Yeah. So, you know, think think about it like this, man. Think about how many hours. Think about how how long you've had to work in this kingdom, in this world. Even, you know, <laughs> I lost my train of thought of what I was about to say, but think about uh, how you can work your your normal nine to five job or whatever, whatever your hours may be, whatever you had to do in this world to pay your bills. Think about how long you've had to do that. How even though you complain, even though you're tired, even though you may be sick and, and not feeling good, you know, yet you still make it to work. Yet you make sure you're still getting that paycheck. And yet, and you make sure your bills are paid and that you're happy and that your stomach is full and that you got all the excess that you want to please your own self, to please your own flesh and folly. Yet still, when it comes to obeying the will of the Heavenly Father, you how about Shemiah Shai, which has been declared unto you, which you know, yet, oh, now you can come up with an excuse for that of why you couldn't or why you can't or why you shouldn't or why you won't, you know. You got to think about that, man, and 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 realize where you are in, in this faith. You know, I'm roughly paraphrasing the scripture in my mind right now, where the, where the Lord, you know, through His servants, even told us a uh, measure or basically test to see whether or not you are in this truth in the faith, because according to the scriptures, those that love the Lord Yahweh Shai, Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, they're going to be feeding His sheep, right? According to the Bible. Hey, these aren't my words. These are the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. I'm just a messenger. I'm just an obedient servant, man. Looking to be an unprofitable servant, man. In, in the positive way, not the negative. Because the scriptures do talk about the unprofited, the unprofitable servant in regards to a wicked and slothful servant. That's not that's not what we're talking about here, man. We're talking about those who have done all those things which are commanded of them. That's what we're talking about. You know, which is why, you know, us men that find ourselves entering into these labors, rehearsing these righteous acts, even the profession of our faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, amen, we're commanded to, to do all the things in which we were commanded to do. Grow daily, man. You know, this truth is not stagnant, you know, and, and, and growth is not in just one form or way, man. There's growth. Hey, you can grow in every aspect of your life, man. Even even it even trickles down. This truth even trickles trickles down to your physical health, man. You know, you know how your body is. You know, hey, th this truth will affect that as well. And yeah, we understand we are we get feeble in this truth, especially in this captivity and in these these uh, 
bodies, you know, we, we get weak. Yeah, but guess what? Hey, there's times where, you know, you might get into the scriptures one day and, hey, the spirit might hit you. You might feel, you know, 12 years old, man. You might feel like you can go and, and, and tell that sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it is going to obey you, man. You know, that's what the spirit will do, you know. But those who are like minded, those who understand the assignment and, and, you know, the spirit is dealing with them. Hey, we understand that and hey, we... <sighs> There, there's always more that you can do, man. That's really the point I'm trying to, you know, harp on, you know, without beating that too much. Because, you know, you shouldn't have to say that too many more times. Like the Lord, Yahweh Shai repeated three times for our sakes. Now he had repeated three times, you know, and look, we're just going to get the point. And Lord willing, y'all can get it. If y'all can't get it, it's just really not for you. You know, let me go ahead and get this. Uh. I want to go ahead to 1 Corinthians. Oh, here we go. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. All right. Let's get this last verse down here. Verse 58. As it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, the brethren whom uh, the Apostle Paul loves. Hey, if the Apostle Paul loves you, hey, that means you have to be an Israelite. <laughs> Didn't we read that earlier? <laughs> hey, it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren. Paul was an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. Right, so he's talking to the other tribes, especially them that be in the faith. Right, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, not only is the Lord not going to forget your labor of love, your labor of love towards the sheep, but He's also not going to forget your faith. You know. He's not going to forget how you trusted in his words and acted upon it, man. You know, trust and believe the Lord has a, a just reward set up for you. You know, if you are steadfast, let's get this word steadfast, man. All right. Steadfast. Hedreos. Hedreos. All right, I'm going to play it. Strong's G, 1476. Hedreos. Hedrias. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all heard it. Hedrias, right? And it means what? Sitting, sedentary, firm, immovable, settled, right? That's what you understand. You got to be fixed on this sure foundation, right? You got to understand what you are a part of and don't, you can't be shaken off of it. You got to understand your duty is to feed the sheep, man. And no matter what, no matter who stands in your way, you're going to do it. You know, until according to prophecy where the Lord causes the famine of this bread of life, man, where many are going to seek to and fro, but they're not going to receive this truth, man. They're going to hearken to them fables and lies that are left out here and ultimately be deceived to their destruction, you know. But those who understand the assignment in these times and, and have uh, the ability to profess and confess this truth, you know, the 100 percent truth even hey you are commanded to do so and if you do not do it if you hide that talent you know under that napkin hey the lord is going to judge you accordingly you know yeah hey and that's just the the end and all be all of it matter of fact let's read this with that being said matter of fact i also want to get always abounding let's get this word abounding what does it mean to abound right Perdicio. Perisio. Strong's G, 4,052. Perisuo. Okay. Perisuo. Peris, perisuo. So I was close enough, right? It's the Greek word, perisuo. And it means what? To exceed a fixed number of measure. To be left over and above a certain number of measure. To be over, to remain. Look, hey, the Apostle Paul encouraged us to, to do more than what we thought we could do. Right. To exceed a fixed number of measure. So let's say, you know, for just a simple example, let's say you want to be able to go hit the plow at least once a week, which, which, you know, which is beautiful. You know, once a week, that's pretty consistent, you know. But guess what? Let's say you set in your mind that fixed number to be once a week, but you end up through the spirit. Hey, the spirit just hit you one day. You end up going out two times a week. Or even maybe three times a week. Hey, the Apostle Paul encouraged such behavior to exceed a fixed number of measure. Right? Right? 
Let's see. To exist or be at hand in abundance. It's not a little bit of works. The Apostle Paul wants you to have an abundance of works, you know, fulfilling your faith. Right? It says, a thing which comes in abundance or overflows unto one. Uh, to abound, to overflow. You know, that's basically the point. Uh, it says what? Let's get it. Uh, super bound. Be in excess to be su- superfluous, right? Matter of fact, I've heard that word before, and I can't think of the definition right now. So let's go ahead and get it while it's uh, get it while it's hot. You know, it's how easy it is to grow. I've heard this word before, but I don't know exactly. Look, it only took me two seconds to figure out what it means, and now I can use this word. <laughs> uh, it says uh, superfluous, unnecessary, especially through being more than enough. Right. So the Apostle Paul is not telling us to do things that are unnecessary, but he is, you know, according to the context, betterly applying, especially through being more than enough. He wants us to have a a full assurance of our faith, you know, as the scriptures even say uh, to make your calling and election sure. You know, there's not a shadow of doubt in your mind that the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahshua is dealing with you because you are showing fruits of the spirit continuously. You know, you know, that's the point on that. I, I just want to show you all that, but it's not even letting me see. As soon as edification come out, now you saw when I fuck with technology and shit, man. Come on. Let's see. All right. Let's read the scripture one more time, man. First Corinthians 15 and 58 it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, fixed on that sure foundation, which is the word of truth, which is spoken unto you. And you have the truth and you know the truth. Right, it says, "Be steadfast, unmovable, always having excess, always exceeding more, always doing more in the work of the Lord." Right? Yeah, it's fine with you know. Don't get me wrong; it's fine with going out. You know, once a week, if, if that's all you could do, that's the best of your ability. You know, and the Lord is gonna reward you righteously for that, man. But also know that hey, abounding in the work of the Lord is not going off, man. If anything. You know, you're, you're abounding, man. You're, you're doing more, you know, and the Lord. Hey, there's parables in the scriptures that talk about men that were given five talents, men that were given two talents and men that were given one talent, you know, and we understand the rewards that they were all given for their own individual diligence. You know, some received, you know, 10 because they were diligent with five. Some received four because they were diligent with two and so on and so forth. May I get the point? It says. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So not only were we commanded to abound in this truth, but we were also commanded to understand the severity, the seriousness of this truth as well. The Lord Yahweh Shai is not looking for servants who are going to be hired one day and fired the next day. He doesn't want you, man. He wants those that are 10 toes down, you know, uh, until forever, man. You know, he, he don't want nobody that think they want to serve him, think they love him. And then the next day, they cursing them out and, 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 you know, doing all types of manner of wickedness and evil, man. It's not the men that the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, wants. And there are plenty of men that are out here like that, man. There are plenty of men that have ran to do the work. Yet the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, had not sent them, man. You know? This is Luke chapter 9 and verse 62. This is what the Lord, Yahweh Shai, said in regards to a man that is double-minded and is not sure if they want to be a part of the ministry or not. They're not sure if they want to do the work of the Lord or not. This is what the Lord Yahweh Shai said. Luke 9 and 62. And Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, right, which means doing the work, you know, and looking back. Because what is a plow? The elder apostle of Tahar brings out, you know, brings this out beautifully. You know, he goes into how a plow works, man. A plow, when you're riding a plow, man, is, is being pulled by, um, Basically by the cattle. I'm not going to say the wrong animals, but, you know, being pulled by cattle. And, and if you take your eyes off off the plow, off of leading the cattle in the right direction in the way that they should go, they're going to start to deter from the path, deter from the way. And then your your, your crops are going to, your basically, your, it's going to be destroyed. It's not going to be right, man. You know, basically, if you were hired to, to work the plow and the farmer sees that you were just carelessly going about doing it as your own way, not paying attention. Hey, man, you're going to get fired. No man wants to hire a servant who's not going to do the job that they were hired to do. 
And this is the same way with the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Says, and Yahweh Shai said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, right, taking his eye off the point, taking his eye off the mission, the intent, the purpose of this truth, you know, says, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, thinking about, thinking back to the world, the things that they forsook and the things that they had to give up for this truth, they're thinking back and reminiscing. And thinking about the good old days, quote unquote, and desiring to go back. Hey, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. Which also means if you're doing this work half heartedly, if you're doing this work in partiality, if you're doing this work not in sincerity and in the spirit of truth, hey, you're not fit for the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahshai. You're not going to be blessed to inherit the kingdom, you know, and to be a, a um, even a, a, a ruler in that time, man, you know, to have, you know, because, you know, uh, according to the parable of the talents, we understand that that was in regards to doing the work on this side and then receiving the fruits of your labor on the next side. Right. For those of y'all who can follow me, you know. So with that being said, understanding that what you do on this side is going to reflect and show in the next world and the new kingdom that's going to be established. Hey, if you were faithful over a few the, hey, the Lord said he would give you many in the kingdom. If you were faithful over five cities, hey, man, the Lord is going to give you ten cities. Hey, you were able to win five souls in the kingdom. Hey, the Lord is going to give you authority and power over ten souls in the kingdom. Just as examples, you know. And with us understanding that, hey, if you were set over a one soul and you didn't do nothing for that soul, why in the hell would the Lord give you two souls to watch over? He's going to rebuke you and cast you into utter darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, man. You know, the Lord Yahweh Bashim is not dealing with you. And as he said, you're not fit for the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. You're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be put to death. You're going to be destroyed. The Lord has no use for you, you know. And that is the negative regards of how the word unprofitable servant is used in the scriptures, you know. As being just a wicked, slothful servant. You just didn't do nothing you were commanded to do. We desire to be the unprofitable servants who have done everything Yahweh Bashim Yahshah has commanded us to do. You know, even exceeding and abounding. The Lord Yahweh Shai even told his apostles, the works when ye see me do, ye shall even do greater. Right? We're actually going to see those greater works be done in the earth, man. Which is an example, a brief example of abounding, doing more. More than enough, you know. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshai purpose, you know, his servants to, to, to be like that, to do it, not only to serve him and be obedient to all his commandments, but even to love doing it and to desire to abound in it. Lord, I did that and I loved it. Can I do more? What else can I do? Is there anything else I can do? Lord, that was beautiful. Uh, the water, the water, the water, Yahweh Bashim Yahshai for doing, uh, for allowing me to, to serve you in, in such a way. You know, that was only uh, given to, to your chosen, you know, uh, no. Hey, man, this is one thing. The Lord just gave me this, man. This is one thing no other nation can be able to say that they've done is, is prophesy and teach of the kingdom of heaven to the elect to be the very voices, you know, the very tools that the Lord uses to, to help him bring salvation to his children, man. No other people can say this, you know, but the men of the Lord, man, you know, which is a beautiful thing to be a part of. You shouldn't take it lightly at all. You know, the scriptures say many were called, but only few were chosen, man, you know. And that's not to, to you know, try to boast up you, you brothers mentally and you know, to put you on a, a, a pedestal or, or put pride in your hearts. But that is something that we should acknowledge. We are on a level. You know, we are on we are on a level and that level does happen to be higher than the majority of the inhabitants of this earth, man. That's just how the Lord sets us up, man, in the spirit. You know, once again, not to, you know, go around boasting, you man, you niggas ain't like me, you know, man. The Lord doing with me. No, I mean, the Lord is doing with us, but we also are commanded to be of a, a lowly, meek and humble mind and spirit. Yet still having an understanding of our rank in the spirit. You know, because there are ranks of men in the spirit, man. But, you know, let me let me digress from the point. The whole point being, hey, man, you, you should understand what you're a part of and even desire to grow therein, man. You should. This is Revelation 3 and verse 15 through 17. We're going to end on these, man. 
It says, uh, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot, right? And this is the Lord Yahweh Shai truly speaking to the Laodiceans, right? The church in Laodicea, right? And the Lord Yahweh Shai is calling them out on their BS, man. Saying that they got one foot in the world and one foot in the truth. They're trying to serve two masters. They're trying to be uh, on the outward appearance looking like a man of the Lord, but on the inward appearance, they truly desiring the ways of wickedness, man. You know, the scriptures say, what? Revelation 3 and 15, I know thy works. Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh sees everything. He knows exactly what you're doing. He knows exactly what your thoughts are. He knows exactly what you plan on doing. He knows the intents of your heart, man. As the scriptures say, he is a, a, the spirit is a discerner of the intents of their heart. Roughly paraphrasing, man. You know, it says, uh, Revelation 3 and 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Hey, you're, you're not fully in the world and you're not fully in this truth. It says, I would that thou work cold or hot, right? Because that's how the Lord operates. He deals with a just balance. He deals with light. He deals with dark. He deals with up. He deals with down. He deals with right. He deals with left. You know, he deals with hot and he deals with cold. But they all have different purposes, right? The Lord said in his truth, hey, and to be his servant, he don't want you to be double-minded, he don't want you to be unstable in all your ways. He wants you to be hot on fire. Like even the prophet Jeremiah said, man, it was like a fire shut up in his bones. He could do nothing but speak, you know? And know that what he was speaking with the words of prophecy as you hear the like-minded men uh, in the same Rakhaha Kodash today, the Holy Spirit still speaking the words of prophecy. All right. Uh, Revelation 3 and 16, it says, So then, because thou art lukewarm in regards to this ministry, once again, this is what Yahweh Shai is talking about, how we are to serve him in his ministry. You know, it says, So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. The Lord is going to reject you. You know, the Lord is going to reject you as an un uh, unprofitable, wicked servant, man. Because you are neither cold nor hot. Because you don't even know why you're doing what you're doing. Hey, man, I'm just not going to deal with you. You can kiss my salvation goodbye. You're going to be destroyed, man. Because you don't even truly believe in it. If you truly believed in the, in the ministry, if you truly believed in the truth, so like, if you truly believed in, the, in you know, the calling in which we were called to do, then, hey, man, it's just not for you, man. The Lord isn't dealing with you because everyone who understands the assignment, they're fulfilling their lots. And all truth and sincerity. You know, they're being obedient. Even up until the bitter end. Hey, even if they have to be martyrs for this truth, they're going to do it. And they're going to praise you, Yahweh Shem Yahshai, in the midst of it. Even afterwards, when they receive their salvation, they're going to continue to praise the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahshai. Which goes to show you once again, there is never truly an end to serving Yahweh Shem Yahshai, man. We're going to be doing this for eternity. And we love it, man. Call all your help by You know that we have been blessed to have such a, a power, such a beautiful heavenly power as our heavenly power, our God, according to the Bible. Abba now you how about Shimia Shai, which is the God of the Israelites. He's not the God of you heathen. He's not the God of you Edomites, you white people, so-called. You know, because you guys aren't truly white. You guys are red. We're not gonna get into that though. You guys are the true devil of the earth. You know, as as y'all do live and lie and deceive, we we are out here to profess the truth until the end of this wicked world, man. Which we will see very soon, man. You got uh, China and Russia talking about how they bring how they uh, were drawing their dealings with the U.S. dollar to forward a new currency. You know, even to help forward prophecy, which uh, hence that the MOTB is really on on the brink. Of, of being pushed in America, man. Which, rewind the video. If you don't know what the MOTB is, man, I already mentioned it. And if you want understanding on what the MOTB is, there's videos up on the channel. Just type in MOTB, Men of Israel 2, and watch the videos and be edified, man. There's plenty of videos, you know. But, hey, with that, I'm not going to drag this out too much longer. Uh, Lord willing, this is edifying until you sincere. Akiam and Akwa, uh, which, once again, is Hebrew for you brothers and sisters. Sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days of fear and trembling. Lord willing, this is edifying. And to y'all, until next time, I say shalom. Call Haloyim La Abanawa Yahweh.
Ba'asham Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham Rachah HaKodash, Wa'ababa Ba'a, Delta America.